Hi there, this is Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor with our Supervisor Spotlight. And today in the studios here at Long Island MacArthur Airport, uh, Long Island News Radio, we have with us in the studio Donna Morovic, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Southside Hospital Northwell in Bayshore, a part of the Northwell system, which is huge. And uh, so, Donna, I am so delighted that you're here today. This Thank is you. really, really, Thanks, really Angie. cool. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to talk just talk and I, I want to find out you know how does a woman you know wind up running a hospital what is your background how did you start so you know I decided uh, when I was actually three believe it or not I wanted to be a nurse I watched a my, my grandmother's nurse visiting nurse start insulin injections on her and I oh, could wow. not understand how a needle went into someone and would be helpful I couldn't I thought it was a sewing needle well, sure a while to figure yeah that sure out. but I always thought I wanted to be that lady and I graduated high school in three years and went on to Fairly Dickinson University for nursing nursing is my background I graduated and became a cardiothoracic surgical ICU nurse initially in Manhasset North Shore University Hospital um, I graduated in 1981. I was two years old and very smart child. Um, <laughs> but we, I actually worked a night shift and loved it. I loved the critical care aspect of, and the rapid decision making of an ICU. I then decided that after working with a bunch of residents, and I, I love working with them and learning, I realized I probably can do more. So I became, I went to Stony Brook University and became a nurse practitioner. In 1995, when I became a nurse practitioner, an NP, no one knew what we were. And it's I true. had to spend a lot of uh, time in educating the cardiologist mm-hmm. in particular. So I became a nurse practitioner for cardiothoracic surgery, which was really amazing because it was pre, post, intra op, and you kind of took care of the patients even when they were home, they'd call you. And I absolutely love that. That was the most gratifying um, position because you had the ability to affect change, make patients feel better, and treat them. Can I just say something? You know, recently my husband was in the hospital, and uh, he was in the MICU, the medical intensive care unit, for over a week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no disrespect to doctors, but that care that you get at the bedside from the nurse uh, is absolutely incredible. And not just for the patient, but for the family there to see that their loved one is really being cared for by a caring, compassionate, you know, person who really takes an interest and comes back on the next shift. And, you know, the, the new person coming on in the next shift is, is equally caring. And then the next day comes in and the nurse, the same nurse is back. And there's that continuity and, you know, knowing what the issues are and what the patient, who the patient is, really, really makes a difference. You can see it happening. And uh, so then you became a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that fiber of your being that makes you care and want to make things better as a nurse, now you are in charge of the hospital. So how do you feel that, does that make you a better administrator? I think yes. Uh, but but tell us how that, that sure. you know, those two roles intertwine. Yeah, and in between there I did receive my MBA because, you know, you have to be able to speak to 360 group of people, right? right. You have to know up, down, around. So I was asked by um, our health system, and I was actually published in Politico, on the five reasons a nurse should run a hospital. And it was so easy for me to write this. It was in a second. And I look at this as a nurse can triage. And every day in a hospital, it is rapid triage, you know, whether it be money, whether it be hiring someone, whether it be uh, moving a bed, moving a, an ICU, moving a floor, building, meeting with the community. As you mm-hmm. know, I'm out there constantly. That, to me, is such a pivotal part of the role. And then you manage patients. Managing patients and managing things, it's keeping everything on the burner. When a patient is post-operative or perioperative, you have to manage not only their heart, but their respiratory tract, their their GI tract. It's much like running a hospital. I look at every department as a, as a human organ, mm-hmm. and I treat the hospital like it is a patient, which I think is pivotal. The other thing is, I have my little notes here, sorry. Is, no, that's all right. Uh, talk in the talk. When you are in a position of authority, it's easy to say things or ask questions, 
But if you don't understand on what you need or what that physician is saying to you, it's difficult to understand how to put a program in place. And many times I'll find myself even sitting at a table to implement a brand new program and I will ask the question, well, why does that, what does that mean? Why do we need to do that when we can do this? And, and sometimes I'll get an aha from the physician like, mm-hmm. you know, but that's just amazing. I, I think too that the one, my mantra and my message to everyone who's in that hospital in an administrative position is think from the bedside. If you lose sight of that human being in the bed, then you've lost everything. And I think that that is so important. So when someone will tell me this is a really critical thing we purchase, Mm -hmm. I will say, well, let me know how that affects the human in the bed. Give me the reason why we should do this. And we always look for a financial opportunity to so we can reinvest in patient care. It's always about the patient. And lastly, communication. You know, when you're at the bedside of a patient and you have to give some awful news, or you have to make some really tough decisions. It is, there's nothing like that. You're making eye contact. It has to be awful. It is, Just it, awful. or tell someone that their loved one is not coming out of the operating room. There is a lot around that. So communication, whether it be good or bad, is really pivotal in running a hospital. It's 24 seven, and I think the energy level has to be there. I mean, you can, you know, I've seen you at Southside and you've seen me buzz around that building. Mm -hmm. I, every day when I'm having a bad day, I go into a patient's room, sit there and talk to them. I will never forget where I came from. And nurses know that. I I was a nurse's aide in a nursing home when I was in Fairleigh Dickinson. It is the way you were raised. And I believe that I was raised to look at patients first. And it's the way our health system, Southside Hospital, everyone knows my mantra, but Northwell is focused on the human beings in the bed. And I think that that's a pivotal part of running a hospital. And I I think with that focus, uh, that's probably been part of the reason that Northwell's been so successful and, you know, is constantly reinventing itself, reinvesting uh, in our communities uh, because they really, you know, believe in it. And it shows. It really, really shows. Uh, You know, you said communication. That is so key, Uh, whether it's good news or bad news. But I think to be direct and to be honest uh, in that communication is something that I've seen you do. um, and, And I like to think I do also, you know, just tell it like it is, you know, be honest and and things will, you know, they'll work out. Sure. Sure. One of the things that I always say, who owns the patient? That's always the question in healthcare. And as an NP, I, you know, the buck stops with me. So when I go into a patient's room and they feel disjointed, I will still say, who owns the, who, who's my doctor? And I'm, I'll say, I'm not your doctor, but I'm going to be your guardian right now. I'm going to make sure that things mm-hmm. go well. I, I insert myself wherever I need to be inserted. And I will never, I say this all the time to everyone, you are never so big as to have the inability to stoop and help a patient. You sit next to them, you talk to them. If there's a problem, I stop in the hallway. Patients look lost, visitors look lost. You Mm -hmm. stop in the hallway and direct them. So I think that that's important. But I think the toughest job of communication in healthcare whether it be you know bad or change, as you know, we're expanding our facility. You have to just communicate, and that's the best way to make things happen. You know, I'm not saying this because you're here, but I have, as Donna said, been in Southside a number of times for a number of reasons. And I commented on that not too long ago to someone that no matter who it is that I've encountered walking in the hall, that whether it's someone who's in housekeeping or someone in whites who maybe just came out of the operating room, uh, everybody says hello. You know, you get a smile, you get an acknowledgement. You don't get this head down, anonymity, you know, I don't want you to know me, I don't want to know you, you know, I'm too busy, I'm too important. You don't get that feeling, you know, and that is really, really important. And I can't help but think that it comes from the top down and being a nurse and being caring, it, Mm -hmm. it kind of permeates what happens in the halls of Southside Hospital every day. Donna? Stay with us. Uh, We will be back. Going to take a little bit of a break. Thank you. Welcome back. 
We are in the studio here at Long Island News Radio at Long Island MacArthur Airport with our special guest today, Don Morovic, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Southside Hospital North Shore in Bayshore. Um, so, you know, I think we can all agree that health care has changed dramatically over the last 10, 20 years uh, from where it used to be, whether it's in the hospital setting or in a doctor's office. You know, it is totally different. And uh, certainly incumbent upon those in the field to keep up with the changing needs of of the industry. Uh, But there are so many programs that probably weren't in place before that are now. So tell us about some of the the things that are happening at uh, Southside Northwell. Sure. So Southside Hospital is now um, our anchor tertiary for the Suffolk County region. We have three other institutions in Suffolk County, which is Huntington, Mather, and Peconic Bay. And what that means is we are this cardiac surgery backup for those institutions. We sponsor their cath lab. And having the background in cardiac surgery and cardiology, oh, help enormously. I actually go out there quite frequent as they build their cath labs. I'm responsible for their quality along with their uh, leadership team. So we have a great, robust cardiovascular and surgical team. We are the top 50 hospitals in the United States from U.S. News and World Report in cardiac surgery. And I was the vice president. And it, before I took this role as executive director, I put open heart surgery there along with Alan Hartman and Stephen Bell, our, our director. So that started the transition of Southside and the growth. We are a level two trauma center. We have expanded our facility tremendously with the support of, of mm-hmm. course, Islip Town. We have built 70 incremental beds. We've changed our beds 70 incremental in the past seven years. I've been there for seven years. We've moved out our rehab. We have uh, built more programs in the building. So we have an OBGYN surgical oncology program, Dr. Schwartz, who's phenomenal, and I is um, t- leading our program. Mm-hmm. Cardiac, cardiac surgery, as I said. Neuroscience is our new next initiative. We have invested an uh, enormous amount of money. We have a... Uh, a, cl- a really f- outstanding neurosurgeon, Dr. Chalif from Manhasset, who was in the ICU and I was in the ICU in 1986, mm-hmm. a phenomenal vascular open surgeon. We have two neurointerventionalists coming and we are working on stroke. <coughs> so when a patient comes in and they have a large clot in their head, uh, we will be retrieving that clot. So we're working on putting this program in, and we have hired the staff. The physicians are coming in, and we're ready to initiate that program in the next two months. I'm sure that uh, recruiting these top-notch uh, doctors is not the chore it may have, may have been 20 years ago because the reputation has changed so dramatically for the positive. Correct. And, I, I, you know, that's actually a very good point. <coughs> when you want to put a program in, um, you can have, you know, people come to, for a program, but they also know the physician's name. Mm-hmm. Cardiac surgery with the name Alan Hartman and Dr. Rob Kalimi and Fernandez, who's saying our doctors are well-known in Suffolk County and well-known in New York State. Uh, that date is actually published, but you bring out someone like a Dr. Chalif, who's a world-renowned uh, neurosurgeon, and we have Dr. D'Souza. So all of these physicians are coming, banging on our door to come to Southside. It is um, an unbelievable, unbelievable thing to see that, but you're absolutely correct. When the reputation changes, you're watching uh, the caliber of physicians enter the building, and it is quite astounding. We have six new chairmen um, that are all unbelievable chairman and have shown their leadership skills elsewhere. So it's it's an unbelievable hospital. When I walk through that beautiful brand new lobby, um, it really makes you puff out your chest and say you cannot believe. Yep. Um, I tell everybody the front lobby is when you see it clean in a hospital, and I am all about being very clean in a hospital, it means the operating rooms are immaculate, and that's how I envision everything. The areas that the public sees that's have correct. to really be sparkling because... They're not always going to see an antiseptically clean Correct. operating room. But if the lobby is not, you know, there's the thought in the back of your mind, well, geez, if they can't keep this clean, what's the rest of the place look like? Correct. Correct. And that's part of that is cultural change, too, mm-hmm. with the staff. So if you're walking through somewhere, you will see me pick up any paper. Uh, I saw a Band-Aid on the floor the other day, and, and I was speaking to someone, and I ran and... Um, went to get a glove uh, to pick it up, but y- you don't just pass it by because who is going to pick that up and everybody's eyes and ears for that hospital. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things we do too is do not pass a, a buzzer going off on a patient. So I could be walking in the hallway with 
Mr. Michael Dowling, Mark Salazzo, anybody, they know I will stop and go into that room and answer the buzzer because somebody may not be able to breathe. Somebody may need pain medication. Yeah, you just I will don't know. not stop. And, right, I will not stop taking care of patients. Well, um, you know, listening to all of this uh, really gives one a sense of comfort. You know, um, no one wants to have to go to the hospital, but certainly uh, we're very blessed in the town of Islip, and uh, I, I really marvel at, at all you do, really. Um, I'm particularly intrigued with the fact that you are going out and recruiting and bringing that neurosciences program there because I just think, you know, the heart problems were there and recognized and I think for the most part the awareness and the availability of the necessary treatment options are there for the community. But in the neurosciences with stroke and all of the other issues, that hasn't always been the case. So we have, uh, the investment is huge. And what we look at when we decide to put a program is what are the gaps in care or where do we need to make an Mm -hmm. investment? And neurosciences is huge. There are so many patients, you know, we have the cancer center, the Inbert Cancer Center right down the street. We have our brand new Bolson Emergency Room. All of that, we are poised now to deliver that level of care. And I think that that is, you know, one of the things we look at is with our patients Mm -hmm. is putting a catheter much like a cardiac cath and giving chemotherapy right to a tumor in the brain i mean that's one of the that's what we're looking at that kind of um elevation of care but the one thing having being at northwell coming to Southside, and i say this all the time i have a cohen's event today is you want to go to a hospital that knows its limitations and you want to go to a hospital that can say Um, We can do this, we will do this, but we have to do it right. I never start a program unless we have all stakeholders round table. It's a go, no go. Are you comfortable with what we've done? Are you comfortable with what we've done? If there's one person around that table that says Mm -hmm. no, I don't think this is, and I I mean, talking. I'm talking cleaning the equipment comfortable, Mm -hmm. right down to environmental services. We pull that trigger then and and let the program go. But at Northwell, what we don't have, what no one has, um, in, in what we don't have in the hospital, I should say, our physicians are very smart. They will say, let's transfer this patient out. This is the right level of care. So a two-year-old and comes guess in, what? transfer. That, that is great to hear. And, you know, you have to know your limitations. You can't be everything. That's absolutely correct. You know, and uh, to be able to have that level of confidence. And I guess that comes from being part of a system. You know, if you're a standalone hospital, you know, by yourself, uh, it's got to be different. And I do remember when Southside first became part of a system that the community, there was a lot of angst. There was a lot of concern. We're being swallowed up. You know, we're going to lose our identity. And that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still very much, Southside still very much has that sense of community, but like you said, if there's something that can't be handled there, somewhere in the system it can be. Absolutely. And my, you know, one of the perfect examples is you want to be good at some things. When I look at having Cohen's Children's Hospital, which is an absolutely unbelievable, if you've ever not been to Cohen's, you have to take a trip there. It is a hospital built for pediatrics. You walk in the absolutely, the lobby is spectacular. Mm -hmm. But I happen to know the cardiac surgeons there, the CEO of that hospital, the service line leaders. They are all focused on pediatric care. And they are, you know, U.S. News and World Report, they are rising in their in their level of recognition. I am so, I, I have zero, zero, zero reservation about sending any patient there. And that is what, you know, I look at our emergency room physicians and I'm proud of them because they know the limitations. Mm-hmm. Our pediatricians know their limitations. We have three great pediatric cardiologists, Dr. Goldberg, and that is what we do. We take care of the patients we can and we utilize our health system for the rest. Well, Donna, thank you for for that. And, you know, having family members going to a hospital is tough, but can you imagine when it's a child? It just elevates that whole sense of, of concern. Uh, but stay with us. We're going to be coming back to learn more about what's going on at Southside and Northwell. Thank you. Welcome back 
to Supervisor Spotlight. I'm Angie Carpenter, Supervisor of the wonderful town of Islip. And one of the most wonderful things we have in our town is great hospitals, uh, Southside being one of them. And uh, Donna Morovic is here with us today. She's the Executive Director of Southside uh, in Bayshore, part of the Northwell system. And, uh, you know, so much has happened, even in my short tenure as a supervisor. You know, I've been to the uh, ribbon cutting for the Inbert Cancer Center and the expansion of the incredible ER. Uh, you know, no one wants to have to go to the ER, but certainly uh, the one at Southside is uh, is state of the art, really. And uh, but there's more on on the horizon. So share with us some of the things that are in place and Absolutely. and how we're going to get there. Absolutely. So, you know, this is where we partner, of course, with the town of Islip. We are. Um, I look at us as synergistic and working together for the community. We are, you know, parking's a problem, and we are uh, building a parking garage. In order to do that, we had to shut down our 240 spots, and we are working with um, the local mall, and we're parking in the back, and we're lighting the area of security. We're working with um, bus transportation right. back and forth. Yep, so yep. we are expanding. We're adding 1,034 approximately spots. I believe that number's a, a little bit changing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but that will encompass future growth. So our, you know, at any given time, we probably have about six, 700 people parking during the day, but that will allow for expansion for the future. So that's a big deal. We are also... Um, and looking- I know that, and I want to put a plug in for yes. our uh, planning commissioner yes. and, and oh, staff. They've been great. Uh, there have been so many pre-meetings and meeting meetings uh, discussing how we're going to get to where we need to be. You know, parking is an issue in, in Bayshore, uh, which was one of the reasons a number of years ago that the town board unanimously decided to implement a parking management program. The chamber had come to the town uh, many, many times over the years for help with managing the parking. Um, and part of it is, is you know, a problem any downtown wants to have. They want a parking problem. That means people are coming to your town, yep. whether it's using the restaurants, the train station, going down to the ferries, using the hospital. You know, there are so many reasons for coming to Bayshore. Um, so working together, though, and trying to come up with those solutions, um, I think, is is really, really key. And your people have been great. And I really have to give a shout out to our commissioner, Ron Meyer, Michelle and Chris, that whole team that really it's more of let's try to find a way to make this work. Not, oh, no, no, we can't do that. You know, so um, that seems to be moving along nicely. I know I saw some uh, elevations. I saw some actual sample of that's material correct. that are going to be on the side of the building and all and so that's moving along great and so what are the, some of the other plans so we are building a uh, brand new neonatal ICU and a, a uh, women and infant section of the building so we are expanding our uh, neonatal ICU to 16 I believe it's 16 beds it's it's the way it's built it's different we have our postpartum we're expanding that to be single rooms uh, and you know having a leader like a Ben Schwartz helps us build that the right way so it's built for the future we have a baby cafe believe it or not which is where most of the moms or moms come in and learn how to breastfeed it's mm-hmm. an unbelievable thing uh, we're expanding ultimately one of our goals is to build a pavilion as um, we know mm-hmm. in the future and that will increase our ORs and our our ICU beds and our floor beds and I look at that as where are we now and when, when we do something like that we look at I look at this as a whole region. So what should be at Southside? What can go elsewhere? What's more elective? Mm -hmm. Uh, We're working with the, um, we have, uh, we work with the local ambulatory surgery center. Mm -hmm. We've moved out some ambulatory surgery and we are now opening up our ORs for those high end uh, gastroenterology, you know, the GI procedures. Procedures, Uh, Mm -hmm. We have hired a new chairman of surgery who happens to be a bariatric surgeon, but also a general surgeon. You have to be a general surgeon first. We have cancer surgeons. Um, So what we have there is now it's growing those programs, cancer programs, and as well as, of course, general, for, we call it foregut surgery. So mm-hmm. it's pancreatic surgeries and um, esophageal stuff. It's it's amazing what our OR does right now. It's amazing the caliber and acuity of our patients. Uh, so that's, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. But 
I'll tell you, when I've been in this role for seven years, we had about 1,900 employees, and now we have 2,700 employees. Um, so what's were there about 2,300 FTEs? Mm-hmm. What's really important about that is our economic impact is now one billion fifty four million, according to Haney's. That has helped to develop downtown. Bayshore. I go to Bayshore. I mean, my hus- we live in Babylon. My husband will say, "Let's we go to Babylon to support Babylon." Sure. But Bayshore is a hustle bustle oh, place. It is. It is an absolutely really, beautiful really community. Mm-hmm. And and you know, so I think that you know, when I look at all that we're doing, I think that this is just going to make Bayshore. It'll put Bayshore and Brightwaters. It's an islip on the map for mm-hmm. sure. Well, we're pleased that it's all happening and and pleased to be a partner, you know, with everyone that's working so hard on it. Uh, You know, you talked about the uh, neonatal and expanding that portion. I remember when it wasn't so long ago that the home maternity section was brand new because my grandson was born at Southside and it was... uh, It'll be six years in September, and uh, it was fairly new at that point. And you know, you're expanding even further, and that's that's very very exciting. It really is. And you know, when I I've given up an office, we've given up the administrative suite. You know, I call us the administrative vagabonds, but <laughs> we uh, we actually have an office out. You know, so we're building our suite also, but. It's so important. Again, my mantra is the patients are first. So mm-hmm. we're, we've given up space and, you know, for the patients, it's the yeah. right thing to do. It is. It, it certainly is. But um, so uh, there have been and we talked about the synergy between the hospital, mm-hmm. the town, the government, so to speak. And um, I, I know how important it is. And it delights me that. Everyone at Southside has embraced that concept that they understand that we're there. Uh, we need to work together. Uh, we've had many, many partnerships. I know that uh, Southside comes. We're doing a health fair at our senior center in Brentwood uh, in September, doing, uh, you know, uh, flu shots and uh, just health awareness for the seniors. And they look forward to that every year. And, and uh, Southside's been at the forefront there. Uh, we did some flu shots for our employees in town yes. hall. You guys were there. there. Yes. And we really, really appreciate that, you know. And uh, recently, uh, it was a lovely summer day. We were on the beach That's at right. West Islip Beach. Uh, it was a joint project uh, with Southside and not only the town of Islip, but the town of Babylon. Uh, Supervisor Rich Schaefer, one of his town uh, council people were there and his parks commissioner with the sunscreen dispensers. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, doesn't seem like a big thing, but it is a big thing. You know, the awareness that has been raised uh, because of those free sunscreen dispensers is amazing. Right. And I think, you know, that's one of, again, it's like smoking. It's the preventative. Mm-hmm. It's preventative. The, the primary way to, pre- it, you know, take, with, in healthcare, the primary um, healthcare is considered prevention. So having a 30, sun, 30 SPF sunscreen right. available at your fingertips, 25 of them for Islip, 25 for Babylon is a really big deal. When I heard about this, I jumped on this because it's something we can do for that community. And, you know, we have the cancer center there and our physicians are, say the amount of melanoma that they see, which is, as many know, a very bad form of skin cancer is, mm-hmm. is really important. So, I mean, important to prevent. And I think that, and I, it's very interesting. I have friends randomly send me a picture of it and say, this is a brilliant idea. Isn't it amazing? And I too have the same correct. thing happen to me. People you love know? it. They absolutely love it. They're like, I forgot my, for my child. Um, so that is an unbelievable thing. And they get filled by the uh, vendor, of course. Yeah. Uh, so it's great. They're yeah. always full. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting too. Uh, you say that you received uh, snapshots of them. Likewise, I did also. Uh, but there was a, a local reporter who had written a story about it and you know they don't always get everything 100% right but it was very interesting and it was a pretty long article and said how many times you run out of the house and you forget the sunscreen and then you see it there and think oh wow you know thank goodness for that yep. so we really thank you for uh, being such a good community partner in a number of ways and thank you so much for coming into the studio today and sharing a little bit about what Donna Moravik is all about thank you if Angie calls I listen oh thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> thank and you. thank you all for watching and listening to our supervisor spotlight 